Mark Rogers TV wrapping up our six part series comparing the conferences. We're taking each BCS conference, lining up the non conference competition, both in bowl play and regular season, to try to determine who played the toughest opponents, not just looking at the record, because there's certainly a difference between the Big East going three and two in bowl play and the Big Ten going two and five. When you look at the opponents, break down who the opponents really are underneath the record. Dissecting the big wins and the embarrassing losses and the dominance factor. Some teams got blown out in bowl play and in non-conference play. Other teams lost a game, but they looked good in doing it. They played tough against a very tough opponent, i.e. Wisconsin versus Stanford. Wisconsin 4-4 four four in the Big Ten, goes to Stanford in the Rose Bowl, plays Stanford uh, to the last drive of the game. A very good showing for the Big Ten despite the loss. That's what we're talking about. We'll explain a little bit more, and we will give a dominance factor, a dominance score to each bowl game. On a scale of 1 to 10, how dominating was the win and also dominating considering the competition? Was that particular team playing up to its competition or down to its competition? Let's get to the Big East. Then we're going to come back on our next video post and really crunch the numbers and make meaning to the numbers. All right, Louisville defeats Florida 33-23. Huge statement game for the Big East. Best game of the year for the Big East by far. Again, Florida came in 11-1 out of the SEC. And yeah, Offensive deficiencies all over the place, but the Gators, with one of the best defenses in the country, made it through the toughest schedule in the country. They beat LSU, South Carolina, Texas A&M, and Florida State on the road. Florida's lone loss was to Georgia, one of the top three or four teams in the country, and only because they turned it over five or six times. This Florida team had a great season, again, 11-1, and but Louisville controlled the game, really outplayed them, and, of course, Teddy Bridgewater played like a man. 33-23, dominance factor for Louisville at 7. The Cardinals had an impressive record, but not impressive showing. They got blown out by Syracuse. Their lone impressive non-conference win over a decent North Carolina team, 39-34. The Tar Heels going at 8-4. So Louisville, again, makes a statement for the Big East. Next one up. Co-champion Rutgers loses to Virginia Tech in bowl play 13-10 in overtime. So this is what we're talking about here. Rutgers a co-champion playing Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech a 4-4 four four team in the ACC. This is not the best of the ACC playing the best of the Big East. This is mid-level ACC playing co-champion of the Big East. This would be like Stanford taking on Northwestern or somebody like that in the Big Ten. Or Alabama playing Baylor out of the Big 12. Doesn't make sense. So it needs to be taken into consideration. And the ACC won the game. So 6-6 six and six, Virginia Tech defeats Rutgers, who tied for the co-championship again in the Big East. So a big loss there. Uh, Virginia Tech lost to everybody decent on their schedule. Their best win before this showing against Rutgers was against Georgia Tech, a team that went 7-7, seven and seven, Virginia Tech's best win. So not a good showing for the Big East here, losing to Virginia Tech 13-10. Rutgers had a win that looked to be pretty impressive early in the season against Arkansas, but the Razorbacks fell to 4-8, and eight, one of the worst teams in the SEC, and Rutgers also lost to Kent State as well. Dominance factor there for Virginia Tech of 2, so we take that 2 points away from the ACC. Syracuse defeats West Virginia 38-14. Good showing for the Big East here. Co-champion Syracuse gets it done, but again, co-champion of the Big East Conference takes on a West Virginia team that was 7-5 and 5-4 and and in the conference in the Big 12. Syracuse, as a co-champion, should be playing somebody like Kansas State or Stanford or Nebraska, somebody of that ilk. So again, doesn't make a whole lot of sense in comparing the conferences, so we've got to take that into consideration. West Virginia's biggest wins of the season were against Baylor and Texas. They also went 1-6 and six in their last seven games, lost by 41, 35, and 21 points. West Virginia was a mess by the time they met the Cuse. Syracuse played a pretty difficult non-conference schedule. They fared okay. Uh, they lost to Northwestern, Minnesota, and USC. Northwestern and USC, especially the Wildcats, a very strong team. Uh, the win for Missouri was against the SEC, but it was Missouri who went 2-6 in the SEC. 
dominance factor there of eight for the Orange over West Virginia. Pitt, Ole Miss, the SEC wins it 38-17 easily. Ole Miss comes in at 6-6, six 3-5 and six, three and five in the SEC. So, of course, Ole Miss couldn't beat uh, any decent teams in the SEC, but they maul Pitt by 21 points. The biggest win for the Rebels coming in over Mississippi State in a big way. They lost to Texas. They lost to everybody decent again in the SEC. Uh, Pitt, non-conference, lost to Youngstown State. They lost to Notre Dame in a great showing, of course, three overtimes at South Bend. Could have won it with a field goal going through the uprights. And Pitt also beat Virginia Tech. So Pitt, in a lot of ways, played better against the better competition, at least until it came to bowl play in losing to Ole Miss. Dominance factor for the SEC of seven over the Big East in that one. And finally, we've got Cincinnati-Duke. Uh, Cincinnati wins it 48-34. It was a close game. They got a pick six late to break it open. Duke, not a good football team. Yeah, uh, kudos to David Cutcliffe and staff for making a bowl game for the first time at Duke since 1994. But six and six, three and five coming in. Their one big win was over, again, a decent North Carolina team, but they got killed by 37, 41, 36, 21, and 18 points. Duke was not good. Cincinnati's big wins, Virginia Tech out of conference. The big loss that they suffered was to the Toledo Rockets. Other non-conference games of note in the regular season for teams that did not make bowl play out of the Big East. Temple lost to Penn State in Maryland, a Maryland team that went 2-10. and South Florida, hey, give it up for the Bulls. They did play Florida State. Miami got killed in both games. And UConn got a win over a 2-10 Maryland team. They lost to North Carolina State. Add it all up for the Big East. They went 10-10 against the other BCS conferences. That's 4-1 against the SEC. But, of course, we've got to explain. That's the shocker of shockers. The Big East 4-1 against the SEC. But, again, it's Rutgers, the co-champion, playing Arkansas, like the 11th best team in the SEC. It's Louisville, co-champion, playing Kentucky, maybe the worst team in the SEC. That was pretty much all the games, excluding, again, that Louisville win over Florida. Very impressive there, no doubt. But again, it's showings like that. Syracuse, co-champion in the Big East, defeating Missouri, one of the worst teams in the SEC. Okay, the Big East went 0-3 against the Big Ten. 1-0 against the Big 12, 5-5, a lot of games against the ACC, 0-1 uh, against the Pac-12, and against the other top 25 teams, the Big East, that was that Notre Dame-Pitt game, losing there, so 0-1 against the rest of the top 25, again, it's 10-10 for the Big East. We're going to come back, wrap it up, look at all the conferences against top 25, top 10 competition, and really break down the numbers and give them meaning. But we need to hear from you to make this really happen. 